Okay, welcome back. Uh, let me just uh, see if I can share the notes so it gets easier for us to read the verses. We'll look at a couple of verses uh, going forward as well. Uh, hope this will help us. Um, everyone can see this? Yes, Pastor. Okay. All right, so uh, yeah, let's go into I think this page forty-seven. If I'm not wrong, yeah, uh, let's go into how do we receive Christ's mediation of the new covenant, right now? How do we receive? Uh, we looked at you know how do we receive blessings? How do we receive everything that? Uh, of the Abrahamic covenant and uh, the Mosaic covenant, and uh, we saw all of that. Now, how do we receive Christ's mediation, meaning what Christ is doing for us now in the new covenant as a mediator? How do we receive it to our lives? Right? Uh, how How is that going to impact our lives? Uh, is it going to uh, be any different as believers? Is it enough for us to just accept the Lord as our personal savior and uh, you know just live that holy life, live pleasing to God? Or as Christ as our mediator in heaven, uh, how is it going to affect our life? So we look at a few uh, uh, examples here of how Jesus ministered uh, under the previous covenant and how it impacted people's lives and how right now as a mediator in heaven, how it's going to impact our lives as well. Let's read uh, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 16. Yes, any one of us? Go ahead. Matthew 8 and verse 16. Matthew 8 verse 16 to 17. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. So, people came to the Lord Jesus in faith. And those who came to him in faith, he ministered to them, he healed them, he delivered them based on what he would do in the future. Uh, uh, on the cross, right? Uh, what did the Lord Jesus say in his ministry? He knew, right? Uh, he knew about the suffering. So every time, even the time when he chose the disciples, he said, I'm not going to be long with you. Uh, the only thing is, well, he didn't give a time frame, but he knew, he, you know, uh, uh, that his end is going to be very uh, dramatic. It's going to uh, cause a lot of uh, trouble and uproar. He knew that he was going to come and he came to die on the cross. Right? He knew it. So the Lord Jesus, he ministered to people based on the cross, based on what he was going to do ahead in the future. Right? Remember when uh, um, Lazarus was dead, uh, what did Jesus say? That word's so powerful. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. But he was just a regular man just walking around. I'm sure the people around would have wondered, you are the resurrection, you are the life. Uh, maybe the disciples would have thought, okay, he's just saying that, you know, when we believe in him, we will resurrect. Uh, or we will have uh, life in him. So we don't know what they all thought, but he, he declared, he knew, he said, I'm the resurrection, I'm the life. So I have the authority to bring this person, Lazarus, out of the tomb. How did he do all that? Because he, his mind, he knew, he based that whole work, the healings, the miracles, on what he was going to do on the cross. And the wonderful part is today the cross is completed. The work is completed. And Christ mediates for us based on the finished work of the cross. Uh, so when we are standing, uh, maybe the enemy is going to come and say, you know, I'm just putting this out like a, uh, you know, like an allegory, right? Uh, 
the enemy is going to come and say okay see this person paul he's done this 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 right these are the wrong things he's done uh and uh, this needs punishment right and so this is just a like i'm just painting a picture for you right and at that moment the lord jesus says yes this needs punishment because this is sin and this is not right before god but immediately as the enemy is trying to pass a judgment or try to bring destruction upon us jesus says but wait hold on i am the, going to be a mediator for him and how am i going to be the mediator through the through the work of the cross and so in the cross i have defeated you i have defeated the uh, the devil so he is standing uh as a mediator based on the cross so that we don't have to live in condemnation we don't have to live in uh sickness or diseases in in bondage of the enemy very important you and i must uh you know receive this this whole uh, understanding this whole belief we must receive it in faith right uh let's look at luke 13 uh 10 to 17 let me just just go down so i think my screen is stuck can anyone of us read that luke 13 10 to 17 i'll just try and... luke 13 10 to 17 now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the sabbath and behold there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up but when jesus saw her he called her to him and said to her woman you are loosed from your infirmity and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified god but the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because jesus had healed on the sabbath and he said to the crowd there are 6 days on which men ought to work therefore come and be healed on them and not on the sabbath day the lord then answered him and said hypocrite hypocrite does not teach does not each one of you on the sabbath lose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it so ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham whom satan has bound think of it for 18 years be loosed from this bond on the sabbath and when he said these things all his adversaries were put to shame and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him Amen. Thank you, thank you, Rosalind. So, uh, this this whole episode uh, shows a very good picture of Jesus as a mediator. Jesus is there. He goes to the synagogue. This woman has the spirit of infirmity. She's been bent over for the last eighteen years. Uh, so Jesus goes into the synagogue, and she says, "How much more?" So he brings healing upon her, and then the Pharisees, the uh, Sadducees, or the people are saying, "Hey." what are you doing on the sabbath day don't work don't do this jesus uh, uh, corrects them rebukes them and corrects them saying if you lose an ox on the sabbath would you go would you go and search for it or would you wait for uh, the next week uh, and so he ends that whole uh, you know uh, discussion jesus is saying so ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham whom satan has bound think of it for 18 years be loose from this bond on the sabbath and when he said these things all his adversaries were put to shame and the lord jesus stood as a mediator in that place now when we extend our faith to uh to receive or to walk in the new covenant blessings 
Jesus is our mediator. He's our guarantor. He enforces these covenant blessings. Now, just as we looked uh, in chapter one, remember we looked at how God is a God who keeps his covenant. He himself is the one who is the proprietor of the covenant. He has made the covenant. He himself is the uh, beneficiary of the covenant. He is the one who is going to uh, make sure that the covenant is fulfilled. His part of the covenant is fulfilled. So Jesus and the covenant that he has made in the new covenant as a mediator, will he will not fail in enforcing the blessings of the new covenant upon us. Right? He's not going to fail. So 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 20. Let's read that. 2 Corinthians 1 20. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen, to the glory of God through us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. For all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. Now, it's interesting to see that, you know, uh, the, there's one devil. The devil is going to keep on, keep on bringing accusations, keep on trying to, you know, make us falter, trying to make us uh, deprive us of these new covenant pro provisions, the new covenant blessings. Uh, he's going to attempt us with uh, you know, erroneous teachings with ignorance, uh, or he may say, this is all, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. Uh, or this is, you know, how can it be? He brings doubt, he brings fear. Uh, you know, one of the strongest lies right now the enemy is using is that, you know, just be good to everyone. There is no God. God is, you know, we can just be good to everyone. And humanity is more important than, you know, all this God. God is the one, you know, because of religion, there's division and all these things. So the enemy brings all these deceptions. And this is only going to increase when we read the book of Revelations. And uh, the things that are going to happen later on, it's going to be uh, seductive spirits. There's going to be, uh, you know, uh, adulterous spirits as well, just trying to take us away from the true teaching of God. But we must remember that all his promises, all his words are a yes and an amen in our lives. The word amen, we know it. It's so let it be. All his promises are yes in our lives. So be it uh, in our lives to the glory of God through us. And so we must understand that the enemy does not want us to have, uh, you know, the provisions of the new covenant. The moment we walk in that, he knows he's defeated. The moment we keep saying, I'm just going to stop sharing now. Uh, the moment we keep saying, okay, God is with us. You know, the Lord Jesus is going to teach me. He's going to empower me. Uh, you know, I'm going through this season. It's all right. I put my trust in him. The moment we declare and say these words and walk in this understanding, we have rendered him defeated. Right? We have rendered him defeated. He, he cannot do anything against us. Uh, but but here's the thing. I love what Ro Paul writes to the Romans in Romans 12. He says, be not transformed to this world, but be, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, why does he say that? Because he knows that the enemy is going to attack the mind. He's going to bring accusations in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. He's going to bring accusations. But Paul is writing, saying, transform, renew your mind. Don't think like the world thinks. Think as what the scriptures, what I am saying of you. The devil is going to make you feel like a failure, a defeated person, a sinner. He may accuse you, but I am calling you through the scriptures, through the word. I'm calling you a son and a daughter of Christ. And these are the promises that I have for you. So don't listen to what the enemy is saying, but listen to what I'm saying. Go back to the word. 
you know, sometimes the enemy's voice can be so loud and we begin to amplify uh, the enemy's voice and we begin to eliminate uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit or the voice of God or the word of God in our lives. But this is so important to understand that we, like what Paul, what, what Jesus is doing here, he's saying, as a mediator, I'm going to bring healing on this woman, whether it is the Sabbath day, whether you like it or not, I'm going to do this because Satan has bound her. And when we stand in that kind of understanding and say, God, I know that you're going to bring healing, you're going to bring deliverance. It doesn't matter what the enemy is doing, but you are able to enforce the new covenant blessings on me because of the cross. He, the Lord Jesus wants us to enjoy the provisions and blessings of the new covenant. He wants us. The Lord is not pleased when we, when he sees us walking in sin or walking in fear and walking in intimidation with the enemy. He's not pleased. Um, he wants to just maybe come, I can picture this, shake us and say, hey, come on, you're more than this. You're a child. You're my child. Shake off all these things that the enemy is bringing. Stand up I'm, and I'm with you. Uh, he wants to, he wants us to receive by faith every provision available in the New Testament. Right? And, and so as a, as a mediator, he's there with us. We have this assurance. Right. Any questions? Uh, if not, we can move to chapter 11. We'll start with chapter 11. Uh, any questions? Any thoughts? Oh, uh, uh, maybe there are times uh, some of us may you know, fall in our lives, uh, fall to failures, fall to the works of the enemy. Let it not suppress us. Right? Let it, let not the enemy oppress us. Try to bring all these accusations. If he does as well, you and I, we, we that's why we need to uh, relate to Jesus through all these aspects. He's our advocate. He's our mediator. He's our allos, paracletos, our comforter, our strengthener, our, you know, our our peace. So many things that he is to us. Right. Uh, all right. Any 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 questions? Any thoughts you'd like to share? Uh, or should we go on? Our new covenant blessings. Now I know that a lot of uh, uh, a lot of this may be something that we already know, uh, but there's a difference between knowing. There's a difference between living it. Right. And so the reason we are studying this is not just to know what Jesus is doing, but to actually relate to him that way and to uh, and to walk in that, uh, you know, new covenant promises and provisions that he has blessed us with. So um, it's a good reminder. It's, a, it's really, you know, every time I, uh, you know, preparing this yesterday, it was so encouraging, you know, uh, to to understand everything that the Lord Jesus, he's given us not only his life, he's given us more than that. Right? He's gone to the extreme limit of doing all that he has to do. And even now, he's doing all he has to do just so that we may be a blessing. Just so that we may, you know, uh, enjoy the blessings of the new covenant. Now, I want to be careful here. When I say blessings, it's not only you know, material, yes, material blessing is part of it. But it's also being blessed in life. The word blessed meaning is we may have little and be very blessed, satisfied, content, joyful, peaceful, uh, you know, a, a peaceful life. But we can have more and then live a life full of fear, doubt, agony, pain, causing destruction. Uh, so it is, it is a, it, to what the new covenant brings to us is blessings, right? Uh, and so we are to walk in these. Now, let's go to chapter 11, our new covenant blessings. Now, we looked at, uh, uh, you know, the Abrahamic covenant, the uh, Messiah covenant, uh, and we know 
a lot of the new covenant blessings. So when Jesus died on the cross, he established a new covenant. The Bible teaches us that he said, I will make all things new, right? He not only paid for forgiveness of sins, but for everything we needed and we desired, God made it available to us through this new blood covenant. So what are the privileges, provisions, and blessings of our, in the new covenant? Remember in the old covenant, the Abrahamic Mosaic covenant, there were certain privileges. There were provisions. There were blessings. Uh, and the same thing is there in the new covenant as well. Uh, now, we, this chapter, we're going to look at two cornerstones of God's covenant with us. Right? Uh, we did look at this, two cornerstones, even in chapter 2. I looked at the nature of God. Uh, but let's look at that again just to remind us. Right. Uh, first thing is the nature of God. He said, I will bless you. Means He means all who he is is made available to each of us. Uh, he's calling us uh, God. All, all of God's covenant names are made available to us. Uh, uh, the word of God is here with us. Now, this is very, very, very powerful. Now, picture this. In the old covenant, they had scriptures, uh, which was uh, written, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And it all of that pointed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, with the new covenant, when we have this word of God, the new covenant word, that uh, everything that the Lord Jesus has done, you and I have a great privilege, a great provisions for us. So picture this. The enemy comes. He brings temptation. We have hundreds of verses, you know, including in the old covenant. But when we look at the new covenant, hundreds of verses. Sometimes, the, you know, one of the verses I always use is, you know, if the enemy comes, bring temptation, and says, uh, the enemy has, uh, has been defeated. He has given me the authority to trample over snakes and scorpions. A simple verse, but packed with power. Say, God, right now the enemy is bringing confusion, torment upon me, bring temptation. But I speak your word which is you have given me the authority to trample over snakes and scorpions. So I trample upon his work. I trample upon his thoughts. I, I, I trample upon his ideas. I break it. Another example, the enemy is bringing temptation. You say uh, He's bringing a stronghold in our life. You say Second Corinthians, chapter, I think that's five, where he says, the weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but are mighty in God We're to bring down strongholds right and so we have these wonderful you know verses the words of god that will you know that has established us it assures us of all his promises and wonderful the word of god is what keeps us uh, it's truth it's life right uh, let's read galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 and verse 29 Galatians 3, 13, 14, and verse 29. Sorry, I'm not uh, uh, projecting because uh, every time I project, uh, for some reason, my laptop is hanging. So I'm trying to avoid that. So, that the, uh, so let's read Galatians 3, 13, and 14, verse 29 as well. Galatians 3, 13, and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. It, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 29. Verse 29. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Yeah. Thank you, Rosalind. Yeah. So Paul is writing to the Galatians. Now, we know that the Galatians, Paul is really upset. He's gone on his first missionary journey. Uh, he's 
preached the gospel. Many of them have accepted Christ. He's finished his first missionary journey. He's coming back to Jerusalem. So he visits the churches in Galatia, uh, five churches in Galatia. He visits them uh, and he realizes that all of them or most of them who accepted the gospel have gone back to the law and circumcision. So he goes back and he writes this very stern letter. And in 3, verse 13, verse 14, he says that the blessings of Abraham, that is old covenant, the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So he's reminding them that if you're going to circumcision only to be get the blessings of Abraham, you don't have to do that. The blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Right? Uh, I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say. The Galatians are going back to the law, going back to circumcision because they said, oh, how can I not be circumcised? Then how will I receive the blessings God promised uh, Abraham? Paul is writing and saying, now, if that is the case, the blessings of Abraham might, will come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus as well. So if we believe in Christ Jesus, we not only receive the blessings of the new covenant, but we also receive the blessings of the old covenant. Right. And verse 29. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Now, this is big deal for those who are Jews uh, uh, and listening to this. OK, so if I'm Christ, then I'm also Abraham's seed. Yes, because before Abraham was, I am. Right? So Jesus, uh, Paul is trying to make the Galatians understand that you're going for something which is smaller when there's, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a, say, for example, there's, uh, you know, uh, a gift here, a small gift. And here there's a gift which is 10 times bigger. Right? Now we have access to both. But as Galatians, you're going to the smaller one when you have option to go to the bigger one, to receive the one, the bigger gift, which is 10 times more than the smaller one. Why are you running behind the small gift? Go for the bigger one. Because when you go for the bigger one, it includes all of that which is there in the small one. So, uh, you know, you, I hope you're understanding. And so Paul is writing and he's saying, don't be worried that if you're not circumcised, Abraham's blessing will not come upon you. No. If you believe in Christ Jesus, you will receive the Abra Abraham's blessings and you will also be called Abraham's seed as heirs according to the promise. What are those blessings? We looked at all those blessings, right? Uh, blessed in all things, blessed to be a blessing to all nations, righteousness by faith, friendship with God, victory over our enemies, blessings over our family and children. So in the new covenant we have everything of the Abrahamic covenant and more so. So that is why Paul was very upset with the Galatians. They did not understand. Now, you can't blame the Galatians because, uh, I mean, you can't put the entire blame on them because they were so used to the law. They were so used to, you know, hey, I need to be uh, circumcised to be part of God, uh, the Abrahamic covenant. So Paul is clarifying and saying, you don't have to circumcise yourself. You'll get all of it by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the old prom covenant promises are our minimum, right? This is the minimum. Once you, we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, these are just the minimum, meaning uh, the initial. You will get this, right? And then the new covenant blessings are so much more. And we all can walk in that, right? Let's read. Uh, Okay, there's a big passage here. Deuteronomy 28. Uh, I'm sure we, we have read this many times. So, uh, you know, he's saying that uh, blessed you shall be your basket, your netting bowl. Blessed shall be when you go in, come out. Uh, the Lord will establish you as a people to himself. He will grant you the plenty uh, of, of, of the barns, the fruit uh, of your womb. He will increase your livestock. Uh, the Lord will give you good treasure of heavens. He will make you the head and not the tail. So he goes on and on saying all these blessings. You know, one of the verses I always like to use is, uh, uh, you are, I'm the head and not the tail. 
Right? Uh, it's such a powerful verse. God is calling us to be the head and not the tail, meaning uh, we are not something that is, you know, some, you know, leftovers. No, God is calling us to be leaders, to be the head, to stand in authority. You know, the head signifies authority. Uh, the head of the house is, is, is the one who has authority over the house. So God is saying, you are the head. You have authority uh, with all these blessings. And, uh, you know, we can call forth all these blessings. He will cause you to rise against the enemy. He will command your storehouses to increase. He will bless you wherever you go. You'll have plenty. Uh, so all of this we can call forth to ourselves. Hebrews 7.22 says, By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Was the old covenant good? Wonderful. Is the new covenant good? It's better. So you're not only, Paul is writing in, to the Galatians, he's saying you're not only getting the Abrahamic blessings, but you're also getting the blessings of the new covenant. Now, why is this important? Because we know that in the old, the Abrahamic uh, covenant, the people, yes, they were circumcised, they, were, they would receive all this, but they didn't have forgiveness of sins. They didn't have... Uh, you know, uh, this whole relationship with God. They only had the high priest who would do prayers for them, intercede for them. But in the new covenant, we have a relationship. We have forgiveness. So what we can apply from the new covenant, we apply it into our life. What we have in the new covenant, we apply those also into our lives. Right? Uh, let's read Matthew chapter 15, 24 to 26. Uh, this is a Nice example here. Matthew 15, 24 to 26. Yes. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that video. Amen. Thank you, John. So this is a powerful example of faith. Right? This woman was not part of the covenant. Right? She was not part of the covenant. So Jesus is trying to say, Jesus is not, you know, making fun of her or, uh, you know, trying to mock her. But he's just trying to put a point saying this bread is for those who are part of the covenant. The blessings that I'm giving uh, uh, is for those who are part of the covenant. But you are not part of the covenant. Right. So how can I give you this? And the woman's reply was amazing. Yes, but even when you throw the bread to the dog, the crumbs that have fallen down, uh, uh, you know, uh, is something that we can take. And Jesus was amazed by that response. And she says, you know, this sentence that you said has not only, you know, forget about the old covenant. I'm giving you something better. I'm giving you the blessings of the new covenant and later on the, the blessings of the old covenant will automatically come in. He says, so be it. And from that moment, her daughter lived. The blessing of a new covenant. Right? And, and we receive that by faith. God, the Lord Jesus in Ephesians, he writes, uh, sorry, Paul writes in Ephesians and he says what the Lord Jesus, had, where the Lord Jesus has positioned us uh, as new covenant people. Ephesians 1.3, we are blessed, blessed be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He goes on later to say he has seated us in heavenly places as well, right? First, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing uh, in the heavenly places. 
every spiritual blessing is ours when we are in Christ. And uh, we can we can pray and ask God, God, this is what you have promised. This is your covenant. And I'm standing by this. That you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Second Corinthians 1.20 For all the promises again of God are yes as in name. Some of these are forgiveness, justification, sanctification, healing, redemption. The list goes on. Peace, joy. So much is being offered to us. And here's the best part. As believers, all of us are qualified to partake of it all. We can be Bible college students. We can be people working in the corporate sector. We can be people who are uh, uh, you know, very famous. We can be people who are not famous, rich, poor, tall, short. Nothing matters. We may, be, may have been you know, murderers in the past, lived the most horrendous life in the past. But once we accept Christ, we are all partakers of these blessings. The Lord is not going to say, you are a, you are a murderer no, before. So for you, wait for some time. Only then, uh, after a year, let me see how you are. And only then, I will bless you. No, no, no. The moment we accept him as our personal savior, we can all partake of these blessings. Colossians 1.12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now, I'm reminded of this during, uh, you know, sports days in school. We have something called as the qualifiers. We used to call it heats. Right? You have qualifiers. So, so for example, you've got a 200-meter uh, race. So there'll be about 50 students who says, okay, even I want to run. I want to run for the sports day. I also want to. So there'll be qualifiers. So out of the 50, finally, it will land up with the last maybe five or six people. Six people will be qualified. Now, as qualified people, they have the authority to come on the sports day, stand and run. Right? They have to just go in and run. They're qualified. You're qualified to get in for that race. The same way, I mean, this may not be, may not be a proper, appropriate example, but what I'm trying to say is the same way you and I, as believers, once we've accepted, we are qualified. We don't need certificates. The Lord Jesus does not need any kind of letter of recommendation from our pastor or from anybody. Nothing. The moment we believe, the giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints, right? Not by our own works. Right? He has qualified us. So when we are qualified, there's a sense of acceptance. There's a sense of joy. There's a sense of, you know, hope. And and you know, the Lord Jesus has qualified each one of us. What a joy that is. If you think about it, sit and think about it. He has qualified us to be partakers of his inheritance. You can say, Lord, I'm not qualified. I'm a worm. Uh, or, you know, I, I don't know anything. Now, what are we doing? We are speaking words that are going to cause problem to our own lives. Uh, and we should not. We should not speak that way. You know, death and life are on the power of our tongue. And the Lord Jesus is saying, you are qualified. We don't have to pray, I'm a worm. Uh, help me to become something better than a worm. No. You are not a worm. We are the children of the living God. And we are partakers of his inheritance. So we'll stop here. We'll pick up from chapter 12 from next week. You know, There's a lot of uh, material, but it looks like we're gaining good ground. Um, what we'll do is we'll quickly finish with the covenants. Um, we'll get into the cross, uh, looking at the centrality of the cross 
and the power of the blood of Jesus as well. So, right. Any questions before we close? Uh, what I would also like to do is maybe I will uh, put up the uh, midterm assignment uh, sometime this week. Uh, so the midterm assignment will be 50 marks, and then uh, uh, you know it'll put will be put up on the class tab and also on the stream. So uh, just want to encourage all of us to uh, you know give it before the due date to post the assignments before the due date because after that there's nothing more that you know I will not be able to make changes on the due date once it's already set. Uh, um, I'll do will give the instructions as well. It'll be a simple 50 mark. Uh, exam just to understand what we have learned and then the end of April will be another 50 mark exam which will be our final exam and then both the marks will be collated together as your final grades right so uh, this week uh, sometime I will post uh, and put up the assignment on the classwork tab and also on the stream right uh, it will be an open book exam so don't worry you can uh, no, just refer your notes as well as you write the exam. All right, let's uh, bring the session to a close. Uh, could one of us please close in prayer? Zeli, would you mind closing in prayer? Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Father God, we thank you so much for this pleasant session. But Lord, we thank you for the wonderful truth which we have learned. Holy Spirit, you continue to remind each one of us and continue to teach us the truth which we have learned. Lord, we bless our pastor and bless each one of us, Lord. And Lord, as we discuss from this uh, session, I pray that your peace, your grace, your prayer regard our hearts, our minds, and Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Zeli. Right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great uh, week ahead. Uh, I'll catch up next week. God bless you all. See you soon.